in this video we're going to continue on and of course what we're going to do now is filtering it so for example here we have still some additional tasks here but if I click on this they are on the November and as you can see here we still didn't hit November so these tasks are basically all pending tasks and of course we can filter back to October or we could go even further back in time but we don't have any task here so let's start to explore how we can create this filtering structure so let's start to look now how we can create a drop down here or a select option with the month and then a switch from one month to another month so to do this we're going to scroll down here and first of all what would make sense of course is to have some additional data specifically for that month in this case this is very important you have of course because we have the y scale here this must be in the proper order or else these task number six or what is this task number seven eight and nine would move up here this basically would not matter much however it makes just more sense to have it like this so let's say here 11 11 11 i just put this as well 11 11 and 11. let's save that refresh there we are as you can see if i refresh you can see those values are moving all the way to the right side outside of the screen because right now we only have to 31 october if i move this and you will see exactly what i'm talking about if i cut out this one and put that in here save that refresh you can see here now the upper one is task number seven and then you can see the order just changes a bit so it doesn't automatically sort them uh, chronologically so this is very important secondly if you have here for example another task one save then it will be matched on this one here and you will see what happens if you look at that you can see here we have task one and the other one is basically on there and maybe to see it very clearly let's change that by this save refresh as you can see here we have this task and then we have another one here behind it all right enough about this uh, logic but that's just important to understand uh, let's undo all of that and put it back in here so i'm going to save refresh and we have these three items so what i want to do now is basically have a drop down where you can select the new month and that new month will eventually reflect what or update the chart here and show only that specific month so i'm going to um before i even scroll down here i need to go up here and in here what i want to do is i want to create an input type equals month and then we're going to say slash this all right we say this one to be type month and what we can do here is well we're going to create a function and this function should be on change we're going to do something we're going to say we want to filter or uh, activate the chart filter that's basically what we're going to do here then i'm going to say this has our uh, uh what is this the argument this is the argument here and this argument is a reference to this entire element all right, so now we have this. I'm going to copy this and scroll down here and create a new function all the way at the bottom. I'm going to say function here. It is, of course, not this because here we have to put in what we call a parameter. And we could say here the month or maybe the date. That makes most sense and it's quite descriptive. All right. If I do a console log right now and just say date, you will see refresh. First of all, we have the input here and open up the console log uh let's see here 208 what is 208 i just want to make sure that we remove all the console logs that we don't need to avoid confusion all right this works select here now let's select the date and this is quite interesting because we get the year and the, the month that we can select and we could scroll down here to next year or etc etc so the moment i select for example november 2022 we will get the full element so I want to avoid that. I want to get the value of the element, which is the value attribute. So in here, I'm going to say adopt value to activate the value attribute instead of the entire element. So now if I do this, look what we get. We get here the year dash month. And this is very important. So what we're going to do now is basically what I want here to do is I want to grab that specific month and year, and I need to split them out. That's number one. We have to split them out and then afterwards what we want to do is we want to get the full month from starting month all the way to the ending of the month so we need to know if november would have 30 days or 31 days well basically we know that but the computer needs to understand the logic of that one so once we have that then we have a very nice filter system so let's start to create one 
So the first thing what I'm going to do here is to get the year or extract the year of this value attribute, I want to basically remove everything in excess after these four characters. Luckily, JavaScript has a built-in function. So I'm going to say a constant year equals this date value and then what I will say here dot substring and substring allows us to control which part we want to see and in this case I want to remove or what I want to see is the zero which is the starting point all the way to character number four so we're going to say we start at the beginning and then we're going to end after the fourth character so basically four characters being shown starting from zero which is the very first character so if I do a console log now you will see that the year only has the year 2022 once I select this or any other year so you can see this and if I do here let's go uh, next year if I go somewhere in 2023 we get here 2023 this works all very nicely and let's do the same for this one here but of course here I don't want to have the fourth character I want to start at the fifth character or after the fifth character and then zero and one or whatever the month would be two digits so what I'm going to do here constant month equals date.value and then here again substring and then we can just test and play around if we're not 100% certain but I know it will be five and seven so we started or after the fifth character and then six and seven we want to extract so if I do this and now uh, of course I need to do console log as well let me just move that one here put that in here save refresh and now if I select the month 07 for July which is correct October will be 10 there we are all right this works so now we can basically create an easy functionality because what we want to do now is two things first of all we have the month and we have the year so what I need to do now is calculate what is the last day of that specific month so there will be a constant let's call it the last day and here we have to put something in so what we're going to do is because we need to have the logic for this so what I'm going to do here is create a function or basically a nameless function here we're going to say the Y and M and the Y and M stands for the year and month that we later on are going to get that is this one here so we make this nameless function here and we see function error expression to create this callback functionality and then we're going to say return and what do we want to return well basically we want to get the last date so we're going to say here new date so we're going to create a new date object and then based on year comma month comma zero and what does zero do here zero basically stands for the day so we could do one for the first of that month however that's by default always one but zero what zero does will get always the last value of the month so it will understand or it needs to understand which month are we in and once it knows that it will understand exactly what is the last date of that so then i say you dot get the date number all right so now we have this all I want to do now is create a constant or sorry not even a constant but a console log console log and then we're going to say here the last day and we have these parameters in here and the last day of the parameters here is basically year comma month that's it this year ball which is basically the same like this so now if I do this save that refresh and then now I'm going to select for example February you can see that February it understands that February only have 28 days beautiful so then October it's 31 that's correct November is 30 there we are and December is 31 so it understands the logic now so from now on we can continue on so what I want to do here now is I want to update or at least create a last let's say a starting and ending date that's basically what we need so how do we do this well we're going to create a constant say start date and then what we're going to do here is we're going to say year and I guess what we can do here for the year let's do it in a concatenation structure so we're going to say here uh, backtick backtick 
and uh, hold on this would be equal to and we can just say here this back tick back tick dollar sign this and we put in the year dash basically we're just going to get the year dash month dash date let's say here again uh, dollar sign curly braces put in the month finally here we can just say zero one because by default we always want the first day of the month so that is already working so the next thing we can almost copy this but we will say here end date and maybe we need to or well we don't have to really change the date although we have twice this constant with the same name but it will not matter because we are in this uh, function scope here so or this block scope so that should be fine but then what I want to do here is get the last day and the last day is basically this item here or more specifically what I showed here as a sample just grab all of this put a dollar sign curly braces put that in there all right so once I have that I can get here the end date and just put it in here and see what is the response now so once I select something for example November you can see your 2022 11 or November the third and the date is 30 so it knows this so if I do here February just to test this it understands this is 28 all right now this all works what I have to do now is update basically here this min and max position this here controls what do we see on the scale from 1 to 30 or which month are we seeing so I'm going to scroll down here and all what I will do is I will say first of all um, my chart because I want to go to all right, so now I will continue. Sorry, my suddenly my mouse will have no more battery, so I uh, I had to pause the video. Anyway, so we have the my chart, and then from the my chart, what I want to do is because basically I want to do this here from my chart going up, and then I need to go into this area here. So I go from config to options, from options to scales to x scale, and from x scale we go to the min and max. So let's do that. Let's say my chart dot com dot options dot scales dot x scale dot min and we want to update this value so and the value that will be is eventually this value saying what we're going to do is for the max value here except then we're going to say here end date once we did that we have to say here my chart dot update to update the adjustments that we just made if we save this refresh let's confirm this if we select this there you are as you can see here we get a slightly buggy issue or not really a buggy this is just a coding error from my side or from our side because before we didn't consider that this would be like that here however now you can see here we get this here and we have to fix that later on anyway however one thing is clear now we have it working so that looks quite nice so now what we want to do is well before I even I guess this one here will make, I'll make a separate video but what I want to do is I know that this was still not really fixed let's fix this the weekly sales here and maybe these two tips as you can see here they are sometimes to the left or to the right should we have them to one side I guess this is fine or maybe we just put it up so what we're going to do here go up to the two tip and then we're going to solve some items in here we will say here um, y align equals oh, not like that column string value bottom comma save refresh all right so that looks probably slightly better as you can see here it's slightly trickier this one here but this is a bit more better so it doesn't block too much our our bar here next I want to remove this here because the text here has no real value for us and we could basically move the task down but I will just leave it for what we have here I have a lot of videos about customizing the tooltip but I may, I may make something special on that eventually anyway what I do want to do is to clear out this ugly uh, item here the square the square color is no, has no function anymore and the weekly sales and all this uh, timestamp they don't have any more a value to us so what I want to do here is to remove that. So what I'm going to say here, first of all, is display colors. We're going to set this on false. This here will remove basically the square 
All right, that looks slightly better. Now let's remove the weekly sales text. So for that, uh, what we have to do here is we're going to create a callback, or we are already having a callback here, but this callback is labeled, is on the label itself, and not anyone a title. Basically, this part, which is the weekly sales, is consists of two parts. It's the part of the body, which one is the color box, and the second part is the label itself, which is which is what you're seeing here. Normally the color box goes in front. So what, we already removed the color box, so now the label is left in this um, in the body segment of the tooltip. So what we're going to do here is, I'm going to say a CTX, that's fine. Make a callback functionality, put a comma, and then here, what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to say here, let's return nothing. That's it. If we do this, you will notice, if I refresh, all right, we get this padding at the bottom here, and it's probably somewhere one of the commands there. I don't know, uh, uh, on top of my head, I don't know what the exact command is, but that's all right. It's the least important one. What I do want to do is, you can see here like this here. Right now you see the item is gone, but the only reason why it's gone is probably if we are squeezing it together where the dates on the scale are being squeezed together as well, you will be able to see this. So, next video, I'm going to solve this tiny issue here that will be only shown on a specific chart area and not outside of it.